Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. In this screencast today, we're going to build and install Live RealSense on the Jetson TK1. Let's get started. Live RealSense is a cross-platform library for capturing data from Intel RealSense cameras. Installation on the Jetson consists of two major parts. First, we have to add support for the RealSense cameras and the USB video class module in the operating system which means that we'll have to download the kernel sources, modify the module, and then compile and install the new kernel and modules on the TK1. The second part of the installation covers installing the dependencies and then building the live RealSense library itself and installing it. Let's go to the install live RealSense repository on the Jetson Hacks GitHub account. And we'll clone the repository. Git clone. We'll switch over to that repository. Let's work on modifying the kernel and module first. So we'll switch over to UBC kernel patches. This TK1 has just been flashed with L4T 21.4 using Jetpack 2.2. So the first thing that we're going to do is download the kernel sources, and then we'll open up a configuration editor. So we're going to get the kernel sources. This is a convenience script. What the script does is it updates the system, then it downloads the sources and decompresses them. So now we're ready to work on the kernel configuration. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the local version number. So let's get that. So this is the local version number here, the dash GDACAC96. Make sure that you remember to grab the dash. We're just going to set the same local version number as the stock kernel. So we go to the general setup. Local version. Double click on that. Paste that in there. Carriage return. Okay, so we're set up there. And now we need to indicate to the configuration file that we want the USB video class to be an external module. So we go to device drivers. Multimedia support. Media USB adapters. USB video class is right here. We can see that it's built into the kernel. We want to make that a module so that if we have to go back there and patch it again, all we have to do is recompile that module. So we right click on it a couple of times. When this turns to a circle, that means that it's going to be built as a module. We save the file. Okay. We can close the editor now. We have some patches that we're going to apply to the UVC module. And 
we have a convenient script to do that. Dot slash apply UVC patch dot sh. Okay, so our kernel module has been patched and we're ready to start compiling. So this will take a little while. We will build the kernel. So now we're ready to copy our newly built kernel. Let's do that. The script also places UVC video into slash etc slash modules, which indicates to the operating system to load the UVC video module when it boots up. Normally the TK1 tries to suspend when there's no USB activity. So we're going to disable that because we want our camera to always be talking over USB. The USB port is normally set to USB 2.0. The RealSense cameras are USB 3.0, so we'll also set that up. And that's in the file. Go up a directory, cd dot dot. Set up tk1.sh. So we're ready to reboot and have our new kernel run with our patched module. Restart. Okay, after the reboot, let's open up a terminal. Switch over to install Live Real Sense again. And we're going to install the library. All done. Okay, so now we're ready to test it out. Let's see if we get lucky. Switch over to Live Real Sense. And there's a bin directory where the compiled samples reside. So let's switch over there. Let's run the configuration one. Hmm, so far so good. Let's start capture, see what happens. The moment of truth. Oh, it worked. There I am. So this is how you configure the camera. There are several settings. The one down here at the end, depth control parameters. There are five presets for the depth control so you can select different 
parameters. Let me turn on the auto exposure for the depth. There you go. So you get a pretty good sense of a depth map there in the upper right hand pane. So you can see that when I change some of the camera parameters, it will in hardware actually call out the different outliers. Just that easy, just that quick.